Hi, I'm Bill Myers, and this is another one of my video tips of the week. In this week's video tip, I'm going to show you the settings that I use in Sony Vegas Movie Studio 11, as well as the project properties that I use in almost all the projects that I work on. Let's start by project properties. Anytime you start a new project in Sony Vegas Movie Studio 11, you should set the project properties. And to do that, you go up to Project, and you come down to Properties, and click that. And then on the Project Properties screen, select the template. And I almost always work in 720-30p. So I select that template. And the width and height is 1280 by 720. The field order is none. The pixel aspect ratio is squared. And then the frame rate is 29.9. Now, if you're shooting in different frame rates, you definitely want to change your template here to something else. And then I, I'm never shooting in stereoscopic, so the mode is always set to off. The full resolution quality is good. Now you may be wondering why I don't set the full resolution quality to best. Well, the reality is that setting the resolution quality to good for most projects will give you better results and much faster render times. And on the D interlace method, I always set it to blend fields. And on this one where it says adjust source media to better match project or render settings. Now I do this because it helps Sony Vegas edit the project because it'll make the video clips better conform to your project settings. Now you can turn that off if you like, but I usually leave that on. And then down here where it says start all new projects with these settings, I generally leave that on. And then I click apply. Now in addition to setting project properties, one of the things that I do when I first installed Sony Vegas was to set the preferences for all projects that I start. So to do that, you click options and you come down to preferences. And on preferences, these are the general preferences that I set. And the ones that you probably want to look at are the ones that I haven't set because I've put check marks in all of them. And I don't have a check mark and keep bypass FX running. I don't have a check mark and allow Control H drag or make space bar or double click media to hold timelines. You can see the ones that I don't have checked. Now, there's a couple here that you may be interested in. And this is the the fourth one down, it says close media files when not the active application. What that means is if you've got a clip here on your timeline and you have another application open in the background, if you click on that application, the project here is going to say media offline because the media file is not going to be in the active application. So if you don't want to see the media offline, you can uncheck that and it won't go offline if you have other applications open in the background. In addition to the general tabs, I click the video tab. And on video tab, the dynamic RAM preview has to do with how much RAM your video card has. Since I have a video card with over a gig of RAM, I can set the dynamic RAM preview to a higher number. And I set the maximum number of rendering threads. And this has to do with the CPU that you're using in your computer. You're not going to be able to set that higher than the number of threads your CPU can handle. On the third thing, show source frame numbers on event thumbnails. I set that to none. And on the fourth thing here, where it says thumbnails to show in video events. Now, if you have a high power computer, you can set this to all, and it'll show you frame by frame all the thumbnails here in your timeline. But if you don't have a high power computer, you might want to set this to head and tail or head center tail. And if you do that, it's only going to show you the first center and the end thumbnail of a video track. In my case, I do have a fairly powerful computer, so I set it to all. And the only thing else I set here is the video display preview display and display at project size and simulate device aspect ratio. Now another thing that I always set here is under editing. And you can see that I've set uh, check marks in just about everything except for collapse loop region when no time selection is present. And then under display, what's important here is I unchecked use Vegas color scheme because this changes the uh, screen to a very dark look and I don't like that. And then I also have display timeline at bottom of main window. I don't like that. My timeline is up here on top. My preview window is on the bottom. And then almost all the other settings on all these other tabs I'll leave to be default. And then once I click that, all the projects that are open are going to open with these settings. So to review, generally what you want to do is the first time you install Sony Vegas is to go into options and preferences and set your preferences for general video editing and display. And once you have those set, Go to your project and properties, and then set the project properties for the video that you're currently working on. Now, it's a good idea to set the project properties here to match the output settings of your final render. So if you're going to render to 720-30p, which I do for almost all my videos, then that's what you want to set it to. And then click OK. And when you do get ready to render in Movie Studio 11, uh, render is no longer the, the way to do it. Generally, you click Make Movie. 
and then choose which one of these that you want to use. I almost always choose save to my hard drive and that option loads the render templates and if you put a check mark in the match project settings it'll only show you the templates that match. If I'm doing a YouTube video I'll do a this one right down here the Windows Media and select that one and render to that. Anyway, this is how you do it in Sony Vegas Movie Studio 11. I'm Bill Myers. This has been another one of my video tips of the week. Find more like this at www.bmyers.com and find a whole lot more of my 101 tips and tricks for Sony Vegas Movie Studio, which has been updated for Movie Studio 11. You can find that at my website as well as at amazon.com.